Poor me. I mean, this is terrible. Join us for the ride of a lifetime. Let's watch an idiot try to ride a motorcycle. Some guy rides. Dudes, how can I need all of this for a little motorcycle trip? Can I ask you that? I put it out there for suggestions on what to do. I had a free weekend come up suddenly. My wife invited, uh, I didn't know about this, but one of her friends is coming to town and they're going to do it up. So uh, there's no reason for me to be here. So I put it out there. I'm like, someone give me suggestions because I cannot think of where to go. Like, I've done everything there is to do in Western North Carolina as far as I know. I would love for someone to give me some new secret stuff. But um, anyway. So uh, a bunch of people responded and gave me some great ideas and they're all on the list for next time. But uh, most of them were a little too far away for what I want to do um, this weekend. Um, someone mentioned the Kentucky, uh, the cat. And um, although Johnny Powell said that he thought that might be too rough for the Himalayan, um, it sounds like it's harder than the coal fields and I don't want to do harder than the coal fields, I don't think, on that bike at least. Um, uh, someone mentioned Grayson Highlands. Uh, there's like a cool camp spot up there, but, um, and, and one person was like, dude, just go wander around. And that's what I used to do. You know, I bought the, the red bike was the first bike I've purchased in like 20 years. And, uh, before that I would just rent a bike every year. And at first it was Harley's cause they were easy to rent. Then I was able to get a hold of a, I'd never been on an adventure bike, but I've was able to get a hold of a, a couple of them over the years. And um, I've talked about this before, but for, for years, my thing was I'd rent a bike and I would try to get across the Smoky Mountains without going outside of this certain boundary. I think it was between 26, Highway 26 and Highway 40 maybe, or maybe it was on the other side of 40 too. Anyway, I wasn't allowed to use a highway and it had to be within these two boundaries. And it took me three years to get across because it's impossible. And, um, and that was really fun. And I found some cool stuff. Although the thing with that is if you do that, um, especially in the mountains, you spend a lot of time going up this road that looks cool. That peters out because it doesn't go uh, high in the mountains. And uh, if you look at a map of the Smoky mountains, you'll see everything just peters out, you know, it winds up a mountain and then ends and you can't, you can't get through and so, and the other thing is, after doing a couple of BDR type routes and the tap, it really is valuable that someone else has gone out there and figured out how to connect the coolest dirt roads that there are in some way that makes sense, that gets you somewhere. Because, uh, you know, I've tried to plan routes myself too. And um, again, it's that same thing. I kind of can, I can see sort of where the cool roads are, but they either peter out and go nowhere, or there's no way to connect them to the other ones or, um, whatever. And so it's a difficult thing to do. It's harder than it sounds. And then there's road closures and all that kind of thing. So anyway, the point is I am going to revisit an old favorite that I haven't done in two years, the Smoky Mountain 500. I mean, I had done some dirt before on these rental bikes, but nothing, nothing too serious. So my first dirt ride was Hurricane Creek on the, the, the um, uh, red bike, the little Honda. And then uh, after that, our prep for the TAT was the Smoky Mountain 500. And I'm going to go do the Smoky, Smoky Mountain 500 again on the Himalayan. I just want to see what the difference is. I mean, I know what the difference is going to be. I did a lot of those roads on the Georgia Traverse, or some of them. And so uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to it. It's an epic road. The guy, Andy, who created it is, I mean, he's up there with Sam. Just like, it's a crazy, crazy great route. When you look at it on a map, I mean, they've just, there's this ring of green of national forests or state parks or whatever that goes around and, and they have found a way to get through all of that. And it's an amazing, amazing route. So anyway, I'm looking forward to it. One good thing about being self-employed is that my boss is fairly uh, considerate of my wishes. So I asked myself if I could take off half day Friday and take off Monday. And I said, yes, you can. And um, so I'm gonna. The Smoky Mountain 500 is really like a three day route, but I'm gonna do uh, a half day today. I'm gonna leave like late afternoon and go to Lake Santa, Santa, Tlipa. future Andrew will put it on the screen. I don't know what it's called. 
Um, there's some dispersed camping that hopefully will be free. So I'm going to take it easy today, leave in the afternoon. I'm going to do a part of the Martha three or the Voltar 388 that I've done before. That's a route I've tried to make. Um, a lot of the southern roads on that are closed um, due to a hurricane from years ago. Um, but some of them are re reopened. So I'm going to go to Bent Creek, which is like 15 minutes from here, take dirt all the way across the Blue Ridge, and then down Mills River, and then over to Brevard. And that should, I think that's all open and it's all dirt. Stuff I've done before, but it's beautiful. So I'm going to take my time, do that. And then from there, I'll head down to Robbins, Robbinsville area and that lake and camp for the night. And then I'll do the route uh, the next uh, the next couple of days. Should be fun. I'm planning on camping the whole time. And uh, I just, seriously, what is all this stuff? Like, do I, why do I need all this? But everything that I look at, I kind of need. I mean, some little things I could get rid of, but not really. So anyway, I don't know what to say. It's just a pain in the ass. All right, dudes, I'm packed up. It takes forever to pack up. Did I Have I mentioned that a million times before? I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm packed up. I'm loaded for bear. My, chair is, my chain is lubed. Um, I'm forgetting a million things. And yeah, I think I'm ready to go. Finally. I love where I live. Seven and a half minutes, and I'm on the parkway. Boom! So I think in my office, I, t I mentioned what I'm doing, the Smoky Mountain 500. Did I mention how I'm getting there? I don't know if I did. I think I did. I did, because I remember saying the Voltar 500. So yeah, I'm gonna take the Blue Ridge to, I'm not gonna go to Brent Creek, because I just did that. That's like my after work mental health ride, occasional ride. So I'm not going to do that today. And, uh, but I'm going to go down the Blue Ridge to where that dirt road goes underneath it. And I'm going to head what I guess is what, south? South, I think. And uh, go down towards Brevard. Um, or go to, I'll go through Mills River and then down to, through Brevard. And uh, mostly I just want to see what roads are open now because um, that hurricane a couple years ago just destroyed a lot of good roads. And uh, I know one from Mills River down to uh, Pink Beds, I think that's open. So I'll take that and then I just want to see what else is open. Because the Voltar 388, it's a 388. That's the one. And it isn't the 388 anymore. I don't know what it is now, but um, anyway, that's a, it's a good route. Me and Johnny Powell did it last year. Um, and, but the problem was on the, on the south, all the roads were closed, except for, except for from Mills River to Bent Creek. So if the road, if some of those roads are open back up, it would really be a nice route, sort of a two night camping route. Anyway, I think when we did it, we did uh, an offshoot up to um, Smoky Mountain National Park, some road, I forget what it was called, that was happened to be open that hadn't been in a long time. Anyway, it's beautiful weather, there's a little chill in the air, it's uh, end of September, there's some little bikes, and um, I'm psyched to be out and about. Haven't really done anything since the coal fields. And uh, those videos are posting now. I'm like in a different time zone. My YouTube time zone is completely different than my actual time zone. Anyway, it's like to be out here. Let me get a little distance here because uh, Future Ange implemented a new sort of competitive situation. So let's see, let's see how this is going to go. Daddy ho!
Oh, 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 total fail. A total fail. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm gonna have my tally ho license revoked. Jesus, that was not good. That's definitely not even close. Oh, man, what a way to start. I'm just gonna go home. Forget it. Wow, that was weak. Weak, I tell ya. Oh, and I got a new, uh, I got a new, what do you call it? Shield for my uh, helmet. Visor, not visor, windshield. Screen, whatever. And uh, it's crystal clear and I'm about to ruin it, I'm sure. It's kind of nice. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so ashamed. Tally blow. sound would make me so happy. It's awesome. What else? Oh, I got a new seat from Sahara. And, um, poor me. I mean, this is terrible. Terrible. Um, I got a new seat and, uh, listen, they make good seats. <coughs> Excuse me. And they're fairly reasonably priced compared to say a Corbin or something but um, man they are a jacked up company for real the first seat I bought a couple years ago um, they shipped me one and it was like two inches short so it didn't quite hit the gas tank like it's supposed to so they shipped me another one and uh, I offered to ship that back and they didn't want it. So um, I've still got both of those. Oh shit, that's the spot. Ah, you guys are distracting. Um, so usually my, my mental health ride would go down into Bent Creek. It's like a 45 minute hour long little circle and uh, but I'm going to Mills Creek also I'll get back to the seat but um, I've got some I need a sticker here don't I well yes I do I'm getting very sidetracked on my, my stories here okay I totally forgot what I was talking about but um as I should have assumed seeing a truck there, this is like newly grated with some fluffy stuff on top. It's not altogether pleasant. It's not quite time for the terrorist gravel song, but it's uh, it's terrorist gravel adjacent for sure. Okay, what the hell was I talking about? The seat. Let me let me finish with the seat, and then maybe by then I'll remember what the hell else I was talking about. Okay, so the first time they sent the the wrong the wrong seat, they sent a replacement for that. I liked that seat until the first time that it rained, when I found out that whatever protection waterproofing they're supposed to do on the inside, they didn't do. So it would rain. That would soak into the the foam. And when I sat on it, it would squeeze out and, uh, you know, ass didn't like it. So I made the decision to unglue the seat and try to fix it myself. And I had this, this like saran wrap type stuff. It's the stuff that you use for like wrapping up your suitcases or something. I don't know why I had that stuff, but anyway, it's been sitting around for a while. And, uh, 
And so I used that to line the foam and I got some super fancy upholstery spray glue and, uh, and I put it all back together and I did a shitty job, as you might imagine. It wasn't bad, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible, it was usable, but it wasn't good. And uh, so anyway, so from there, all along the edges, it started to sort of just be messed up and whatever. Um, but I liked that seat. It looked good and uh, it was comfortable. But it was time to get a new one. So I ordered this one, which is like a different model. And the one thing about that seat, in the actual part where your ass goes, the little curved part, it, um, it would come unglued, or it came unglued immediately. I tried to glue it back and it came unglued again. So it like puffed up and it was just weird. Um, and so the new, the new model of the seat has stitching in there. And uh, I'll take a, I'll video it so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and so I thought that would be better because it wouldn't do that. And um, so anyway, I ordered the seat. I was tracking it on uh, DHL or whatever that they used. Um, and uh, it was almost to my house. It was like out for delivery. And on the tracking, suddenly it said the shipper has called for this to be returned or something like that. And I'm like, what the hell? So I called DHL and they're like, yeah, the shipper called us and said that they wanted it shipped back to them because they did something wrong and your seat is on the way to Germany or something. So they mixed up the order, which is typical of that company. And so <coughs> I emailed them, my, uh, my dude at Sahara, um, and he's like, no, we shipped it out. It's on the way. He just like totally lied to me about the whole situation. I'm like, dude, I, I know what's going on. DHL told me. And I'm like, so when is it getting here? Give me the tracking. He gave me the tracking and it was like India Post, which is like the cheapo, takes forever um, shipping option, which I would have been fine with if I could have paid less and gotten that in the first place. But at this point, my, my seat was already supposed to be there. And now they're cheaping out on me because they screwed up. And I got kind of pissed. And, uh, and I'm like, well, you're going to have to refund the shipping that I paid for DHL. Because that's, that's mostly the price of the seat. The seat itself is, uh, the seat itself is like $60 if you were in India. And the rest is shipping, and it's like a hundred dollars in shipping, hundred and something dollars. So anyway, I told him I wanted that refund, and uh, he kind of gave me the runaround, but I got the refund because he was in the wrong, dudes. And so it took another, I don't know how long, three weeks or something, um, for it to get here. And I don't know what I think about it yet. It's cushy, but it's kind of large it's not like uh, contoured like the other one and sleek it's kind of like a big throw pillow or something I don't know I don't know if I like it or not we'll see and uh, I think maybe the other thing I was about to talk about was my French suspension uh, I tried to explain it to Johnny Pow and Tat Steve so they could tell me what to do about it um, and I, I can't really explain it very well because they didn't know what the hell I was talking about like if I'm stopped and I bounce up and down on the bike it feels normal you know it bounces it doesn't bottom out or anything it's uh it just feels like it always has felt oh this is crap um I should have just gone to Mills River and started there anyway but something's different like I can feel potholes and bumps in my hands differently than before like I can feel it more it's like a little more hard or something jarring uh, sharp maybe is the word I don't know something's different and it's uh, I'm concerned about it I'm not that concerned about it but I'm a little concerned about that something's wrong 
So uh, if you know what that could be, let me know. Of course, this will be 10 years from when this is actually happening, so by that time I'll probably be dead, but let me know anyway. It's just weird. Thank you. I wonder if the road's road to Brevard from Mills River is like this too. This is really not good. It's just not fun at all. And I'm going so slow. Man, I'm complaining very early on into this trip, aren't I? And, uh... When's the last time I have done a video? Was it the... Was it with... Was it the... I don't even know. I don't know. Must have been Del Rio with Stan and... Uh, Stan and Johnny Powell, maybe? Anyway, I don't know if this happened before or after that, so I don't know if I've mentioned it, but... Got the coolest comment of... Uh, ever, I think on some video, one of the tap videos, I think. Um, and if I've already said this, I'm sorry. I just, I don't know. I don't know if this happened before or after the last time I did a video. So, do you remember on the tat trip when I was going through my camping dilemma and like kind of uh, not comfortable um, not comfortable camping, uh, you know, at a non-campground, wild camping. Um, anyway, I was just going, going through that sort of fear of, of doing that, which I, I think I've gotten over, although I'm still not good at wild camping. I'm not, like, if it's a, if there's a fire pit and someone's camped there someday, some, sometime ever, then I'm fine with it, no matter where it is. But just like going off into the woods off of a road, I'm not good at that. I can't, I can't seem to figure that out. Like it's really complicated or something. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I was talking about that on the tat trip, and um, it, it brought up Blair Witch Project, which is a movie from the '90s that, if you're my age, you'll know about, and if you're not, you won't. Um, but it was kind of a groundbreaking film, like in the way that it worked or the, the style of it. It was uh, it was like documentary style and like a bunch of TV shows copied it afterwards, like The Office or um, Parks and Recreation. I, th I swear, I think that movie was the start of all that, where it was kind of like documentary style. Maybe not, maybe I'm, maybe I'm making that up. I'm sure there's been documentary style stuff before that, like Nanook of the North. Wasn't that... Well, that is a documentary. I don't know what I'm talking about. And I don't know why I'm babbling so much already. Anyway, the point is... I brought up Blair Rich, Witch Project because... It scared the shit out of me and made me afraid of... The woods. Kind of. And, uh... But also... There was a an aspect to it where at work, and again, I've said this, I've said this on the tat trip, so sorry if I'm repeating myself. I am repeating myself. I'm, I think I'm having a manic attack or something. Am, am I manic depressive now? Anyway, I uh, I was working locations, I was the location manager, and I stayed, everyone left. It was Angeles Crest Forest in the middle of nowhere, and uh, I was waiting for security to get there. It's the middle of the night all by myself, nothing out there at all. And in Blair Witch Project, there are these stick sort of sculptures that the boogeyman is leaving out in the woods. And they're creepy. They're creepy. And I made some and hung them on, like, the grip and electric truck and uh, the trucks and, you know, because I thought it'd be really funny in the morning because that movie had just come out. And I... Uh, what I did instead was just completely freaked myself out because I was out there by myself and 
now I have these creepy stick things that I made that are freaking me out. And uh, anyway, so I've gotten my Saturn, my manual transmission Saturn, and uh, locked the doors and went to sleep and security never did come. And uh, it freaked me out. Anyway, all this is to say, back to the comment, the coolest comment, the writer director of that movie left me a comment on a video. Future Andrew put it up if you can find it. Ah, I forget which video it was now. Oh, I should have taken a screenshot of it. Anyway, he'll he'll have to find it. He commented and he's like, "Hey, dude, sorry that my movie freaked you out." Um, and I, I forget what else he said. And I was like, "Oh, that's just somebody screwing around with me." But I looked up his channel, I looked up him, I looked up, and it's him. How cool is that? The director, writer-director of Blair Witch Project left me a comment, consoling me for what his film did to my psyche. Right? That's awesome. That is one of the best comments I've ever gotten, for sure. Oh, and Elon Musk, I'm pretty sure he watches these videos. Here's what we need. Some sort of uh, device with a camera in it that goes right on your, um, like some somewhere, somewhere over here on your left hand grip. See, I can feel all of that in my hands. I don't know what's going on. Something's going on. Um, so it's got a camera in it and it's got a, uh, a hand-shaped flapper, okay? And, and how it works is you're going down the road through advanced AI technology, it can sense when there's a motorcyclist coming the other way and the hand flaps up and then flaps back down. I think that would sell like gangbusters. I'm just gonna be honest I went through about two years where I was okay with the with the hand with the motorcycle wave I'm, I'm back I'm back to where I'm just it's just another it's just another responsibility that I don't need I'm back to that I've come full circle you can't not do it though or else you're a dick so if someone can invent that I'll buy it I'll be this I'll be the smoke smokes smokes person. I'll be the spokesperson for it. I'll pimp it. I'll promote it. You can pay me to go on tour. I'll demonstrate it. Maybe Johnny Powell can come too so we have two motorcycles so that we can sense each other and automatically wave. I think it's a pretty good idea, honestly. Yes. Yes. This is terrible. Terrible. North Carolina. You old son of a gun. Did you ever stand up on your bike and like lean through the turns and just kind of feel like Fred Astaire? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just downshifted while standing. That's a major accomplishment from me and Fred Astaire. <laughs> you know what I mean though? Like if a light pole came over came up, I could like el put my elbow around it and swing around with the bike. That's how I'm feeling right now. I'm laughing at clouds. Fred Astaire is a badass. I'm just, I'm just going to say that. I stand behind it, too. You remember that violent scene in Clockwork Orange where he's singing, singing in the rain? What a genius. What a genius juxtaposition. juxtaposition. Words. Words are hard. Oh. 
so good. Just so good and disturbing. Well done. That book, that was a major book when I was a teenager for me. Kind of changed my life. I remember that one and Dune. They were both super long and just super good. I must have been like 11 or 12 or 13 when I read those books. Good stuff, good stuff. And that's another thing that sucks about getting old is that you can never discover your favorite books again because you've read them all. I guess that's not true. I'm sure there's books out there I haven't read that I would be in love with, but it's just something about, I don't know, from, from age 11 to 27, 26, stuff goes in your brain a different way at that age. Everything's like more important or something, or everything's like, it feels like you invented it or you're discovering it and you're the only one. And when you get old, it doesn't feel like that anymore. At least for me, I don't, I don't mean to speak for everyone, but. I'm trying to remember the last book that blew my mind. I can't, I can't really think of one right now. <laughs> the overstory was pretty good. Have you read that? It's good. You should read it. It's another long one, but it's worth it. Some very interesting shit in there. And it took me a couple of days to get into it because it starts out and you're like, oh, is this like short stories? Is it these different, just different short stories about different people? And then they slowly like start to meld together. If I'm remembering it right, and I might not be, but it's a really good book. And it gave me something to talk to my daughter about because she's she's got this uh, biology class right now, and uh, it's it's like the uh, the plant side of biology. And her professor sounds like this Indiana Jones dude. He's like goes on these expeditions and he's he's discovered subspecies of a certain plant and named it and like she is in love with him because he's just cool and he's got all these great stories and like she's just so into it and uh and she's like i it really is all about the professor or the teacher it's like something you, ha you really don't think you have any interest in like she she didn't think she had any interest in this sort of side of biology she's more into the she wants to be a vet so that's what she's into but she's just like it's fascinating and it's because he knows how to make it fascinating you know what i'm saying i don't know where where this was going oh the overstory but anyway she was talking about how trees talk to each other and all this stuff and um and i was like yeah you got to read that book in there it's some wild stuff man like how they leave room for each other up in the canopy and they she was telling me about stuff and I think this is in that book too but like if uh, if one tree needs water another tree will like route stuff to it it's just amazing it's amazing and I don't even think it has to be the same species of tree it's just like the, the forest just sort of takes care of its own insert we could learn from the forest or something some hippie, hippie shit like that here oh my god this is awesome So that was uh, Yellow Gap Road, and that hasn't been opened in a while. 
and I'm glad it is. It's a great way to get down here on the dirt and it's beautiful. It's kind of crazy. I only got into motorcycling about two years ago again. I mean, I've, I've always been into it, but I only got back into it in 21 or so. And, uh, and I've, since then I've been on these roads so many times. Because I dig it. Oh, update on, uh, we really are, we're, we've narrowed it down to a Toyota Tacoma is what she wants. And dudes, a used Tacoma is basically the same price as a new Tacoma. There's, they do not lose their value at all. And I've sort of gone down the rabbit hole on them. People freaking love those trucks. Johnny Powell's got one. He loves his. And they're nice. They're nice. I don't know. I still don't understand why she wants a truck. And I don't think she knows either. But that's what's happening. So we're actually looking. We've got the money saved. Um, we're ready to go. We just went on a business trip um, where for the first time since COVID, Jen taught in Fukuoka, Japan and in Bangkok, Thailand. So we were just, just got back from like a two and a half something, maybe more than that week trip. And uh, it's great because we don't have to um, figure out what to do with the kids. Like before, I would have to stay or we'd have to get some grandparents or when they got old enough, it was fine. But, but now, I mean, we can just go. And so since I can edit anywhere, I bring all my work on hard drives um, and she does the teaching thing. And one thing we've got to get under control though is that we I mean, we go out to eat every night, obviously, because we have to. And we drink every night because, you know, why not? Because it just feels like kind of a vacation, even though it's a work trip. And we've got to get that under control. I had lost so much weight before the TMB. I lost about, I don't know, 20, 20 25 pounds. And, uh... I was exercising a lot, getting ready for that, training, doing hikes. I was in good shape. And then this trip kind of, uh, and then the hike itself just brutalized me. Um, and so when I got home, I was still in good shape, even though we ate like pigs on that, on the hike. Anyway, this last trip, man, we just, we blew it out on the food because both Japan and Thailand. Oh my God, the food is so freaking good. So I've gained back about 10 or 15 of that. I got to get it under control, man. It has to be, a, it has to be a lifestyle, right? I don't know how to do it though. It's hard. But anyway, that trip was good. And, um, Jen enjoyed it. I wasn't sure if she was going to enjoy it. She doesn't really love the travel part. I mean, it's a brutal trip, 24 hour trip to get there, 24 hour trip to get back. Um, it's, and the, the time change is brutal. So when we do it, we try to do as many things over there as we can. Um, this time it was only two cities, but next time we're gonna try to do, what I'd like to do is Fukuoka, Japan, and then Seoul, Korea and then a few cities in China, and then Bangkok, and then Singapore, and then Jen wants to go to Bali after that, just to screw around. On this trip, we, we had two free days in Bangkok, and we did some touristy stuff and just uh, lived it up, it was fun. But what I'd like to do, so do all that, and in the middle somewhere, go to Hanoi for a two week break, we just live there for two or three weeks and, uh, and work. And then 
do the rest of the training stuff that where Jen teaches and just make it a make it a month or two long ordeal to really take advantage of that getting over the jet lag we'll see how that goes China is still a little scary um, there's still reports of people getting detained trying to get out of there and uh, Jen that wouldn't be good for Jen it wouldn't be good for me either but it would freak her out so if the political climate gets a little better I think we'll, we'll try to plan that because they are dying for her to come back so that's that and now we're planning a, a weekend trip to New York we did the same thing last year I think it's going to become an annual trip somewhere just a weekend like before the holidays thing and we're full on into planning our RV trip which is going to be up the east coast to Newfoundland and uh, I had wanted to do the Trans Labrador Highway but Jen was like it's a little too sketchy for her she would have done it like it was it was on but when I looked at it it's like it's kind of just a lot of driving there's not much to do up there other than see the pretty stuff but there's nothing up there like there's not many places to go um, just a couple of little little towns to stop in so and it was gonna take you know days to do it that way so I decided to blow that off uh, mostly because it's our first big RV trip and I'm trying to make it good for her and not instead of worrying about what I want to do as much I would have loved the Trans Labrador Highway just because it's a little oh Jesus it's a little sketchy there's some fuel issues and it would have been uh, it would have been fun but not this time maybe I'll do that on a motorcycle someday all right now we're near pink beds uh, sort of above Brevard and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the Smoky Mountain 500 in Anderson which is uh, it's not where we usually do it. We usually get on in uh, Robbinsville, but I'm gonna get on on the red section, which is the third day section. Well, whatever. I mean, it's whatever you want it to be, but uh, in Anderson, and I'm gonna head north on the route there, go to that lake, see if I can find some free camping. I hope I can. Uh, it's looking pretty busy. It's a Friday. So we'll see how it goes. Hey, please like this video if you liked this video. And if you'd like to see more, hit that subscribe button and the alert bell. Also, if you're interested, there are links to gear lists and goofy t-shirts in the description. Thanks a ton for watching.